Hello and welcome back to another Torah Tuesday. Today we're in Exodus chapter 2 and I want to talk to you about the name Moses. One of the curious things about chapter 2 is that for the first nine verses we are hearing the story of Moses but we never hear his name. He is nameless, his mother is nameless, and his sister are nameless. It's almost as if the narrator is trying to say, shh, don't tell. He's trying to protect their identities so that they're not discovered by Pharaoh and killed. But in, in verse 10, the daughter of Pharaoh takes Moses as her own son, and at that moment she names him. So it's almost as though Moses doesn't exist before then. From the perspective of the daughter of Pharaoh, Moses' life began the moment she found him in the river. She names him as if that's his birth story, and she names him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. Now what's the connection there? The name Moses in Hebrew is Moshe, which sounds like the, the Hebrew word for drawing out, Masha. One who draws out is Moshe. Actually, she says, she, it says she named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. But either her Hebrew is not real great or she is speaking prophetically of his future role because Moses, in fact, is the one who will draw the people of Israel out of the water through the Red Sea and into freedom. It's curious that an Egyptian woman would be giving a Hebrew name to, to this Hebrew child. But in fact, the name works in both Hebrew and Egyptian. So in Hebrew, it means drawn out or one who draws out. Whereas in Egyptian, Mose means son of. We can see this element, Moses, in many Egyptian names, Tut Moses and many others and it means son of. Usually it's followed by the name of the deity to whom that person belongs. In this case, it's ambiguous because it's son of, and then it doesn't tell us who he's the son of. And so there's almost a question mark in the narrative as to where Moses really belongs. Does he belong with the Hebrews, worshiping Yahweh, or does he belong with the daughter of Pharaoh, worshiping Egyptian gods. And that question mark is going to hang over the rest of the chapter as Moses himself is wrestling with his own identity and trying to figure out who he is. Now, one thing to note about names and naming in the Bible, when, when a child is named, there's often a sentence attached to it, but we shouldn't understand that as a strict origin or etymology of the word. Uh, usually there's some sort of playful sound patterning going on between the sentence that they say and the name that they've said. But it's not, we should not understand it as this is what the name means. The name sounds like that other word that they're saying. So in this case, Moses' name sounds like drawn out or one who draws out. And, and it also sounds like the Egyptian for son of in Isaiah chapter 63, verse 11, we have a really fascinating reference to the days of Moses using his name as a verb. It reads um, in the NIV, Then his people recalled the days of old, the days of Moses and his people. But we could also understand this as, Then, then he recalled the days of old, the one who drew out his people. So instead of Moses and his people, the one who drew out his people. And then in the parallel line, the next line explains the one who brought them through the sea, the shepherd of his flock. And indeed, we do see that Moses is a shepherd of the Israelites as they wander through the wilderness, as they travel through the wilderness. But back to the naming event of Moses, there's one other um, aspect of this that I just want to point out to you that I find really fascinating. The daughter of Pharaoh is taking a great risk by rescuing this Hebrew child who was supposed to be drowned and by taking him in as her own son. But not only does she put herself at risk, she memorializes her audacity by naming the child Moses. Every time she or anyone else says his name, she will remember where he came from, that she drew him out of the river 
in rebellion against her father's edict. Any time someone with privilege sides with the oppressed, they risk personal loss. And that is absolutely true in the case of the daughter of Pharaoh. She acts with courage and audacity to defy her father. And, and we see it, and we should hear that audacity every time we hear Moses' name. As the story unfolds, we'll continue to wrestle with the question of Moses' identity. Join me again next week for another Torah Tuesday.